What's good, Wizards fans? So, I am a little late here, but everybody has heard the news that Wes Unsell Jr. is out as the Washington Wizards head coach, that he will be getting a front office role. Now, the only reason why he's getting this front office role is because of his dad and the legacy as a Washington Bullet and the only championship that we have in franchise history and the only MVP that we have in franchise history, which is Wes Unsell, uh, Wes Unsell Jr.'s dad. So if he was anybody else, he probably wouldn't have even got that extension. I don't. Wes, Wes Unsell Jr. should have never gotten that, that extension before the season even started. The only reason why he's here right now in a front office role is because of his dad. Let's just get that out the way. Now, Wes, I think he's a really, really good assistant head coach or an assistant coach. But as a head coach, I just don't think he really had it as a leader of men or a guy that can galvanize the team and get the guys going and just getting the chemistry going with teams. You, you look at the first year with Dinwiddie and Montrezl Harrell and uh, KCP and Harrell having a fist fight. Nobody like it. Dinwiddie, I don't like Dinwiddie either. But just the guys not getting along, the prisoners running the asylum. There were reports about that, that the guys were running the locker room and whatnot. Bertans and Denny getting in a fight. Then you remember the Clippers loss where we, we were up by 35 points. It was a historical loss, a historical loss at home. We're up by 35 points. He doesn't make any adjustments. Tyron Lue puts his whole bench in. He keeps Dinwiddie, who can barely move, who's as slow as a snail. He keeps Dinwiddie in, and, and Dinwiddie, uh, Dinwiddie's terrible, terrible defensively. And uh, we end up losing that game. And he didn't even play Gafford in the whole second half in that game. It was just a, it was just an embarrassing loss. Wes Unsell Jr. has been on the wrong side of history many, 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 many times as a Washington Wizards head coach. <clears throat> Excuse me. The 35-point the uh, Clippers loss, the uh, giving up 109 points in the paint to the um, to the Denver Nuggets in that game. Um, he, he had a 77 and a 130 record as the Wizards blew black back to back 20 point leads resulting in a loss, had the largest home list home loss in team history, 42 points, a 42 point loss to the Nets at home. That's when Kevin Durant, uh, made Daniel Gafford, Gafford fall the second largest blown lead in NBA history with 35 poor in game adjustments and began the season seven and 36 as well. So, um, there's a lot of historically things historically on the wrong side of history that, yeah, the Wizards, Led by 23 points against the Nets and 20 points versus the Blazers last night. Those were back-to-back -back games where they were up by 20 points and they lost. And also the Pacers scored 143 points in their win over the Wizards Wednesday or uh, one last year, the most by any team in a season hope opener since 1990. So Wes was was brought in to be a defensive-minded head coach, and we got zero defense from him. Honestly, if you look at the statistics, Scott Brooks' teams were statistic were statistically better. Defensively, defensively than Wes Unsell Jr.'s team, which is pretty darn sad. You had Porzingis, Bill, and Kuz, which was a solid three, and they didn't even make the play-in. Didn't even make the play-in. You know, a lot of this is giving the ball to Bradley Bill in the clutch, and Bradley Bill dribbles the ball off his foot. Just stuff like that where Wes just didn't have a lot of in-game adjustments. and A lot of a lot of the late-game play calls or plays that he drew up just didn't really go well. It was just like give Bill the ball and get out the way. Give Kuzma the ball and get out the way, um, basically. So... Players always talk about pushing the pace. At the end of the year press conference, they talked about that. Basically trying to tell Wes what to do, it sounded like. so. Um, but, you know, we move on from Wes Unsell Jr. Was he given a bad, a, 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 a not, not a great roster this year? Yeah, for sure. This is a roster where you're basically tanking and trying to get the first pick of the draft. That's the kind of roster we had this year where Gafford was the only big man on the roster. You trade Bill, you trade Porzingis. They just didn't have a lot of talent on this roster at all this year. So, I get why the record is bad. It's not Wes's fault, but it was time to move on. When you have a new GM and a new front office, it's time to start fresh and move on, just like the commanders are doing. They're getting a new GM, new front office, and a new head coach. They're doing it the right way. No holdovers. Wes was a lame duck coach. I'm excited for the new coach. Um, they're going to bring in Brian Keefe as the interim head coach. He was the USF assistant coach. Brian, assistant coach from 2001 to 2005. San Antonio Spurs video coordinator. OKC assistant coach. New York Knicks assistant coach in 15-16, the Lakers assistant coach from 2016 to 2019, and the Brooklyn Nets assistant coach from 2021 to 2023. So he has familiarity with Michael Winger and Will Dawkins at OKC. And uh, Kevin Durant gave Brian Keefe a lot of credit for the success that he's had in his NBA career. Brian Keefe moved the Lakers defense from 30th to 12th defensively one year or two. So Brian Keefe has a decorated great career as an assistant coach. We'll see if he can take a, and, and get the guys going and develop guys like Bilal Koulibaly. Um, that's the biggest thing right there is developing Bilal and getting him ready uh, for this year and, and next year as well. Just developing as a player, as a young uh, potential franchise uh, piece for the Washington Wizards. So, yeah, it was time to move on from West for sure. Brian Keefe is promoted. They will have a comprehensive coaching search during the offseason. That's per Woj and Josh Robbins as well. So 
Um, the Wills will, Wills will go with an interim for the rest of the year and start fresh next year, possibly. Um, interim coach choices could be like David Blair. Uh, I mean, Joseph Blair, David Vanderpool, and Brian Keefe. They, they could promote those guys. So, But when Winger, when Winger and Will Dawkins, when they hired all those new assistant coaches, like I knew Wes was out the door. I knew he was out the door. When they hired Brian Keefe and those guys, those are the guys that they really wanted to be um, the, the, the top of the coaching um, staff, for sure, not West Enzo Jr. So um, West Enzo Jr., he, like I said, he's still going to be around. But like I said, again, if it, if it was if his last name was not unselled, he would not be around. He would have been fired. So, all right, you guys, you guys let me know what you guys think. It was time to make this move for sure. Uh, a lot of losing under West unselled for sure. Um, disappointing, disappointing tenure here for sure for Wes coming here. I was excited when he's brought here. I thought they should have hired Sam I am Cassell, but they went with West Central Jr. They kind of went with some nepotism there. So, all right, you guys, you guys let me know what you guys think. Hell to the Commanders. I mean, sorry, hell to the Wizards. I will be on Locked on Wizards tonight talking more about it with my guy, Brandon Scott. All right, you guys, hell to the Wizards. Peace.